Number 10. Martin Van Buren was the first president born as a United States citizen. The nation was only founded in 1776, and all previous presidents were born as subjects of Great Britain. Van Buren was born in December 1782. The Revolutionary War ended the following year. Number 9. When Martin Van Buren took office, he became the youngest president at age 54, a title that George Washington held for 50 years. This might seem shocking since Van Buren appears much older in popular photographs. Like many presidents from the time, Van Buren was only photographed many years after he left office. The photographs became more popular than the paintings which were done when he was actually in the White House thus leaving the impression that Van Buren and many other presidents around that time were significantly older while in office. Number 8. While the Democratic Party was formed with Andrew Jackson as its leader, Martin Van Buren was responsible for its creation. Van Buren worked at state and local levels to form political coalitions. Jackson might have had the larger-than-life persona needed as the face of the party, but it couldn't have been created without Van Buren working behind the scenes. Number 7. After Thomas Jefferson and Andrew Jackson, Van Buren was the third single-man elected president. He, like his predecessors, was a widower. His wife died 18 years before he took office, and he never remarried. Little is known about his wife Hannah. In fact, Van Buren didn't even mention her in his autobiography. Number 6. Little Magician and Sly Fox were nicknames given to Van Buren. Both names referenced his small stature, slim and standing at only 5 feet 6 inches, and his political skills. Little Magician was given by allies for his ability to craft seemingly impossible alliances and deals. Sly Fox was given for the same reason, but with more of a negative outlook. John C. Calhoun, who Van Buren eventually replaced as vice president, saw him as sneaky and conniving. Quote, he is not of the race of the lion or the tiger. He belonged to a lower order, the fox. Number 5. Martin Van Buren had a complex relationship with slavery. As president, during a time when tensions over slavery were growing, he took a safe and pragmatic stance. While he did condemn the practice as immoral, he also said that the Constitution gave him no power to interfere with it, and that the abolitionist did more harm than good. Such was the stance of many Northern Democrats. Later in life, he became increasingly opposed to the expansion of slavery, arguing that the Founding Fathers intended for its gradual abolition. Number 4. Martin Van Buren met Abraham Lincoln in 1842 at a party. This was after Van Buren's presidency. Lincoln was 33 and was serving in the Illinois House of Representatives. Though Van Buren, along with most of the people at the party, were Democrats and Lincoln was a Whig, Lincoln and Van Buren apparently got along very well. One of the guests later said that Lincoln, quote, kept the company convulsed with laughter till the small hours of the night. Mr. Van Buren repeatedly said he never spent so agreeable a night in his life. Number 3. Like many presidents from his era, Van Buren was raised in poverty. His father was a struggling tavern owner, who Van Buren described as having, quote, little talent for making or saving money. Unlike Abraham Lincoln, who was completely self-educated for most of his youth, Van Buren quickly caught the eye of a local attorney and began studying law at age 14. Number 2. Van Buren was elected president in 1836 while serving as vice president to Andrew Jackson. This was the third time an incumbent vice president was elected to the higher office, but it would be the last time for over a century. In 1988, 152 years after Van Buren's election, incumbent Vice President George Bush was elected. Bush was riding off the popularity of his predecessor, Ronald Reagan, like Van Buren did with Jackson. However, like Van Buren, Bush failed to get elected a second time. Number 1. Van Buren was the earliest president still living when the Civil War broke out. He was 78 and in poor health, but made his support for the Union known. However, he didn't live to see the war's end, as he died the following year. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and donating on Patreon. 
Donations from $2 to $15 a month help towards more frequent uploads. Patreon link in the description below.